Hello, I'm Chuck Martin, and welcome to the Voices of the Internet of Things. With me today is Kristen Gormson, Chief Executive Officer of Ergo. Kristen has been a management consultant at McKinsey, Senior Vice President at GN Resound, and Chief Operating Officer at Sterling Airlines. At Ergo, now more than five years old, Christian leads a team looking for ways to improve the hearing of millions of people. Welcome back here, Christian. Good to be back. Thanks for having me, Chuck. So we met, uh, gosh, uh, back in 2017 at CES, and I've been following you at CES every year since, and I've been watching your company evolve. Um, and you're, th- this is not sponsored. You're here because I invited you. Um, so I want to talk about the market because I know you have a lot of knowledge about sound. Um, can you give us kind of an overview of what the the hearing market looks like in the U.S. these days? Absolutely, no. And, and again, Chuck, thanks for having me. And uh, you know, you, you, you're absolutely right. A lot of things have passed since we spoke in 2019, right? Uh, I think the world has changed, really. And it definitely changed the hearing aid world. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, movement in the industry as we speak, but obviously, you know, really emphasized through COVID. And, and I know we'll hit more on that. But, but essentially, as we see it today, we're, we're in the, you know, at the cusp of breaking open you know, a whole new category right? and a whole new market opportunity here. So you know, the traditional market, to answer your question, Chuck, um, is hearing loss. Right? And you know, there's 40, you know, this is sort of the silent pandemic. There's 48 million Americans suffering from hearing loss. And less than a quarter are actually doing something about it. Right? So it's a huge prevalence a really low penetration and, and hearing loss is um, is natural, right? And it's a, it's a condition that comes with age and a life well lived, right? The more noise that you've been exposed to or sounds or life that you have been exposed to, you know, you will get it. And one of the great things in the world we live in, people live longer, people are healthier than they have been ever, right? So that means more in the business and industry that's really growing, right? Uh, however, it's also an industry that people are shying away from or solutions that people are shying away from. So I think that's kind of, you know, that's the old hearing aid world, right? The new hearing aid world is the world doesn't stop, right? We learned that through COVID, but we have more than a billion young adults who are getting unprecedented noise exposure or sound exposure through gaming headsets right audio is part of everybody's life and they will all in turn start losing their hearing right and that's why i'm talking about this new category where this is not just something that happens to be to the elder or something which is a part of being old because the old are becoming very much active, right? Sorry, I couldn't help, but but you got me going here. (laughs) (laughs) So of these 48 million people, do they realize it? I think they, you know, it's something we talk about a lot. And, you know, there's a difference between realizing it and admitting it, right? So I think, you know, people are like, well, people around me are mumbling, you know, these things are happening. So... But if you're not hearing well, you can't, you know it, right? I think we all, I know it personally. I know if I go into a noisy restaurant, it's hard for me to follow my daughter's conversation because she has a more soft-spoken, higher-pitched voice, right? And that's hearing loss. Do I admit I have hearing loss? Not truly, right? So I, I do believe that most people actually know that their hearing isn't as good as it could be. Uh, but they don't see it as an issue that they need to do something about or they want to do something about. So in this market of 48 million people, what what changes it? What, how, when do these people start to say, I need to do something versus when they, I don't know if they go deaf or, but it gets really, it gets really, really bad. Then it's really serious, isn't it? Yeah, no, 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 it is. But, and not to create doomsday scenarios out of it because very few people will ever go fully deaf, right? Um, But what what happens is that inherently you shy away from social situations. You stop living life to the fullest, right? You you kind of pull back, right? Because you you don't want to be the laughing stock. You don't want to feel that you're not in control, right? So people start pulling out of social situations, avoiding things that we would be enjoying before, but, you know, essentially what we call it is, is missing out on life. 
Um, that's really, you know, the danger here. And I think historically, the hearing aid industry has been very good at servicing people with severe, profound losses, because these people can really not function in modern society without hearing aids. You, you know, the, the, the tragic part here is the real issue is actually before that, right? The sooner you start doing something, you know, the younger we are when we start making changes to our habits, you know, the easier it is. The older we are, the harder it gets, right? So the sooner that people actually start using support as, you know, most people are doing with glasses and so on, right? You know, we also lose our eyesight over time, right? But people have no qualms over actually doing something so that they don't, so they, they can still read, they can still follow, drive their car, watch the TV, but people don't do the same with hearing aids. So a few years ago, you mentioned that it's really a, a stigma that people, uh, when they wear glasses, that it used to be a stigma that, that, that they weren't intelligent or whatever. And the same thing is happening with, with hearing loss. Is that still the case or is that changing? No, I think that's very much the case, right? Um, you, you, you attend a lot of these electronic shows, right? I think you've seen a lot of the solutions and, you know, the, the, the new innovations that are coming out are all visible, right? And people don't, you know, and they're associated with hearing loss. And people don't want to broadcast to the world that they're actually doing something, you know, or that they have a problem, right? They want it to be, you know, a private matter. It is a private matter, right? So, you know, I think the stigma is very much real as much as it was three years ago. I don't think there's really been any changes in terms of how the category is being perceived so what would change that i think obviously i'm a huge believer in innovation right i i do believe that at ergo we're making changes towards that by changing the product and i think you've seen our product and understand it um i think more awareness more education around hearing loss that this is not something to hide away from. This is actually something where it's about taking control of your hearing, taking action. So I think that's the most important thing. And that, that, that's also one of the things, and I know we'll get to it, right? But, but I think it's so great about what the federal government is doing here in America, um, really aggressively trying to push change and access into the hearing category, because it's going to it's going to drive a better understanding of what hearing loss is. I think the, the old industry has failed in helping people understand what it really is and, and why it is not something to be ashamed of. So I wonder if, if you can talk a little bit about the actual industry itself, aside from Ergo, the, the, the hearing aid industry. I mean, I don't know that market very well. I mean, I don't cover that industry, but what does the hearing aid industry look like? What's the process? Yeah, the, the, the process is part of the problem, right? And that's also why I call it this, you know, the old industry. Um, and, you know, the fact that, that a new industry is emerging, but you know, historically, the only way you can get a hearing aid is to go into a hearing aid clinic, right? You have to go through this clinical procedure. You, you don't get a hearing aid at your doctor, right? Your doctor will say, you, well, you need to look up an audiologist or a dispenser or a specialist, as it's called. And then um, you have to book an appointment. You, you know, you come in. It's your classic medical experience of sitting in a waiting room, waiting, right, being called in. Um, being asked a lot of personal questions, being actually put into a sound booth, which is a quite claustrophobic place, right, to, to have a bunch of tests performed. By this time, you're definitely not in control, right? You as a, as a user or as a consumer, you are at, a little bit at the mercy of a professional, right? You're not feeling that you're taking control, right? Somebody else is taking control, of you, right? You get a hearing screening, you can perform a bunch of various tests varying on where you go, right? And, and what kind of uh, service you're getting. But ultimately, you'd be offered you know, you'd very, very high likelihood because you would never go unless you had hearing loss. You, you will be offered a, a quite expensive solution, right? Uh, average price point in the US is just shy of $5,000 
which is a, a big ticket for you know you know everybody and um then you're being handed a quite sophisticated technology device and you know you're sort of supposed to figure it out yourself every time you need help you need to come back to the clinic right you need to go through the same procedure waiting room in there and that doesn't really you know motivate you to truly understand the product and get all the help you truly need in order to get the best out of your significant investment that's the classic industry right and um, as you can imagine COVID threw the biggest monkey wrench ever into this industry by closing down physical locations and you know going back and forth and seeing people in person which really became has been a huge challenge for everybody since you know early 2020 right and still is right with mask mandates and what have you and the interesting thing about COVID just chip it in there Chuck and I think we had a little bit of that experience, you know, hearing doesn't get any easier when you're wearing a mask. It actually gets harder. <laughs> right. right. So at the end of this, 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 uh, here, this experience the, to the clinic and everything is the end of it pretty much always a hearing aid, an expensive hearing aid. Is that the salute, the end? Yeah, because let's be honest, nobody goes in to have their hearing checked unless they have a problem. They all, you ask the question, are people aware? They're probably aware, right? Have they fully admitted it and understood it? Maybe not. And that's part of the journey of being in a clinic that people, okay, I do have a hearing loss. And here's uh, an individual in, in a white coat telling me uh, about what to do about it, right? Um, so yes, the vast majority of times people walk out uh, with a big investment about something they don't really want to have, but they understand that it's the right thing to do the challenge is they're not necessarily they don't want it and two you know when you don't want something do you really invest into understanding what it is uh making sure that you actually get the best out of it because because of that process no you don't right so people end up having made an investment but they don't necessarily feel great about it that's one of the other big problems of of the old industry that people are you know buying these things but they're not necessarily using them right and if you don't use them you're not getting the benefit right you know a hearing aid only helps you if you're wearing it right it doesn't help you sitting in a drawer somewhere so are there like hundreds of hearing aid companies i, I have no idea are there like three leaders or something like that what, what does that industry look like yeah um you know but this is sort of where you know, I, I spent quite a bit of my earlier career and, uh, you know, back in the 80s, you had hundreds of technology manufacturers. It was very much of your regional business. I kind of call it garage business, right? Because that was essentially what hearing aids was, right? With the emergence of technology, miniaturization, digital chipsets, there's been a very aggressive consolidation um, and also increased regulations of medical devices. So today there's essentially five large technology players in the hearing aid industry that control more than 90% of the hearing aids being sold around the world, right? So there's essentially big five, um, as they're called, of which there's really big four, but five large players who have the audiology competences, technology competences to do that. They then sell. So, so that's the back end of the industry. The front end of the industry is really very much mom and pop independent clinics you know, which is a very local business of having a clinic in a, in a town or in a zip code where you service the local community, right? Uh, and then, but these clinics buy products from, you know, multiples of the big five and offer them. Um, so that's really the, the industry structure. So they basically, everybody can sell pretty much everything of the five? Yes, it depends on who you're on contract with. And of course, the, you know, the big five will always give you incentives to carry more of their product and less of their competitors' products, right? And you know, so, so it's sort of your usual uh, sales game, yes. But you know, any clinic out there will essentially offer more or less the same product technology, right? 
Okay, this is okay. Now this is getting interesting. So now I want to talk about Ergo because uh, I saw you first at at CES in I think 2017, and I was doing IoT and connected things. And what intrigued me about your product was it was not connected at the time. It was an independent thing. Number one, number two, the business model was totally different, and it was pioneering at least at the time, where you were actually trying to convince a consumer directly bypass that channel we just talked about. And, and try try this thing at a at a lower lower price point, uh, and it will deal with you directly as opposed to the white coat people. And at the time, I thought this is going to have to be a connected device eventually. That's what that's what interested me because it wasn't connected at the beginning. And I've watched yes. it evolve every year. I wonder if you could take me th- take us through the 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 journey of that that five years of what going from in, not connected to where you are today. No, um, no, thank you, Chuck. And I think. You, you're thinking about it very much uh, aligned with how our strategy has been. Let's be clear. The biggest issue here is not connected or not connected, right? The biggest issue is to meet people where they are and what they want to do. And not a lot of people want to go through the process we just discussed, right? That's probably the biggest barrier for people to enter into hearing aids, right? And and, and what we wanted to do a year ago and still want to do is we want more people to hear better and we want to meet people where they are right we want to give them the opportunity to access improvements and help support um at their choosing right so not having to go down this forced path of booking appointments waiting rooms clinical visits um so originally you know we wanted to solve for that we also wanted to give people something that they actually want to have, something that's their trusted friend or partner, i.e. product, right? So, so that was the invisibility. So a year ago started with an invisible hearing aid or virtually invisible hearing aid with a very different delivery model. And the way we could sort of execute that, because, you know, hearing is it's complicated, right? You know, we, we've done extensive research on how can we create uh, you know, presets that will allow the hearing aid to work out of the box without being customized by a professional or an individual, right? So we, the, the early iterations of Ergo were basically operating off a, you know, preset device that would give you through programs the opportunity to test different hearing experiences, you know, essentially you know, increasing severity, right? From a mild, mild, moderate, moderate, right? But, and we had been based the settings of the product on on data and saying on average, this would be a really good fit that would fit the majority of the needs within these various so, thresholds. So, so what changed over time? Is it that you actually, the technology <laughs> evolved so that you could actually do that, do that same thing in different ways? Yep. No, exactly. You're, you're, um, uh, you, 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 you're bringing me back to the surface here, Chuck. And uh, that's how we started. Um, we knew that, you know, hearing loss is individual, right? And we all perceive hearing in different ways, right? So how can we give more control to the user? So initially, you could control through manually shifting through programs. But we were able um, in 2019 when we met first time, right? Or last time, right? We, we basically had the opportunity to offer, you know, have a connectivity through the charger that would allow us to see how you were using the product and also modify products, push them out. So we could essentially upgrade your hearing experience through our support teams. That, that by the way, I, I thought was very intriguing because the way that was working, if I understand this correctly, it wasn't it wasn't live, but when you put these things back in the charger, it's all, it was almost like a like Tesla has an over the air download. Um, it, it it at night it basically downloads and updates and goes to the cloud and, and all those things and connectivity. And while the user is not necessarily connected to them, but it still has connectivity. But it's it's time shifted connectivity, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yep. No, and and we were capable of doing that, and I think that was a big. Uh, a step forward for us, right? Uh, obviously, we 
you know, we believe in innovation. My belief in innovation is it's continuous. It's not, it's not a binary. It's something that happens all the time. So we're actually now, we've taken that to a new level with our latest two generations of year go, year go five and six. But now we can still do the over the air upgrades, as you explained. But in addition, we now have the connectivity that is when you get the hearing aids, they will work out of the box, but you can also choose to download our app and then basically go through our setup mode and the devices will actually help you screen your own hearing. So you will run what, what normally will happen in a clinic going through a hearing screen or hearing test. We will screen your hearing across frequencies. We will, we will establish your thresholds because these are all individual thresholds. And then we will give you an opportunity through your app to apply those settings. And you know, based on your interactions with your hearing aids, it will actually tune to how you hear. Right. So we've taken that to a new level. We still we can still push new firmware updates, new feature sets and so on over the year. That still works. Right. But in addition to that, we've we've sort of taken the user modification to a new level. So you can do all of this yourself. Uh, if you can't work it out, right, our support, our hearing professionals who are licensed audiologists and dispensers can can help you do this over video or over the phone. Uh, you know, so basically guide you through that whole process. Yeah, I, then, I saw the I saw these again. I've, I've, been, I've been looking at the devices every year. Every time we go to CES, and they're getting they're getting like really tiny. Is that mm -hmm. could they still have the same sound? That being that small, I would. Uh, they actually have a better sound, right? I, I think you know the, the great thing, and um, one of the things I'm really proud of a year ago is we're fully integrated, right? We're not selling through others. We're selling directly. So we have full control of product design, product data, product support directly to the end user. So we have now sold more than a hundred thousand customers out there, right? And we can use all the data, all those experiences to actually improve our new generation of products. So, the so, sound, so based on the data you have, is hearing changing? I, I mean, you must be seeing results looking at your data. I mean, data is everything. Correct. Um, we can't so much tell about an individual, right? But we can see what people tend to use, right? So we can basically predict what sounds better for you and what are you probably going to like better, right? Because one thing is what we establish in that in a clinical setting, in a lab setting, but what do people really prefer, right? There's a diff, you know, again, you know, hearing is not an exact science because it's, it's all how our brain interprets different signals and, and we all interpret things differently. So what sounds and what type of sound do users prefer, right? And so we can use all of that data and, and, and we've, definitely made significant changes to one on the hardware. So we have even more advanced hardware than we had in the past, but also in terms of how we process the audio, because there's a lot of audio processing happening in the hearing aid, right? And, and this is where the data really gives us so much insights to what people like, because ultimately we want people to like the hearing aids so they use them. So when I see you at CES, and I presume you'll be at the next CES in January again next year, what will you be showing there? You know, our continuous innovation, right? And, and you know, the way I always describe it to people, hey, we innovate on the product, right? On the, on the physical aspects of the products. I think you've seen that. So how do we keep upgrading components, you know, speakers, microphones, chipsets, battery design, right? Fit in the ear. That's sort of on the on the design side, how do we update uh, audio processing, right? How do we make better audio processes, more sophisticated feedback cancellation, noise reductions, automatic functions or learning functions that basically learn from what you do and apply it. So how do we make the hearing aids smarter and better from a software point of view? Um, and then, you know, the new world is, you know, like you said, connected, right? You know, you will keep seeing, you know, evolution on the mobile app. How do, how can we continue to give you tools that make it easier for you to take control of your hearing 
through your mobile app, accessing our support, you know, making changes that matter to you that gives you benefit, right? I think we all know mobile apps. Some are utterly useless and some are really helpful. But how do we keep getting smarter on that? So those are sort of the three innovation from a technology point of view. And then, of course, as a company, we're also innovating within how do we visualize hearing loss in the digital space, right, through through ads. Um, I don't know if you actually also made it to our booth at CES, but how can we visualize the difference between hearing loss, not hearing loss? So loved ones can also experience it's like the physical experiences around hearing loss and the visual expressions that motivate people to learn more. Well, one right? thing so, I, did, I did notice is every CES, your booth keeps getting bigger every year. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. And I think it's important, right? Because like I started saying, we're just opening up a whole new category of not just, you know, hearing aids, but, you know, what we're calling it is actually hearing wellness, right? Because this is, this is just as much of a, it's not just for the individual having the hearing aids, it's also for loved ones, right? To understand the world that your loved one is living in, right? Because we, you know, Hearing loss is part of society and it's going to continue to grow. And I think we just need to change it from being this, oh, there's something wrong with you and it's a very sort of medical condition to much more. No, we all lose our hearing and it all happens gradually, but there's a lot of things you can do, you know, as somebody who loses his hearing or somebody who has somebody close to them that loses their hearing. Well, one, one thing I liked about your company since the beginning, way back when, is you, you're not just selling technology. You actually have a mission, um, and, and I, I really respect that. So thank you so much, Christian, and thank you all for listening to the Voices of the Internet of Things. Thank you, Chuck, for having me. It's always a pleasure.